Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I know I'm a little bit slow on the uptake on this. This was an article published by the Cosmopolitan about two weeks ago and it's been covered by everybody but I haven't given my tuppence worth so I'm going to do so because of the no notoriety of the bucket list family who have stuck their oar in and defended their profession and I'm here today to tell you exactly why they're wrong. So the title of the article is The Parenting Influencers Who Won't Stop Posting Their Children. So let's take a quick look through this article which was brilliantly written. If you scroll through the bucket list family's videos on social media, here is a smattering of what you'll find. Their then 10 year old daughter saying goodbye to her great grandmother's casket, the family diving with sperm whales in Mauritius, the whole clan embarking on a safari in Madagascar, the youngest son screaming in pain while his dad extracts a parasite from his scalp such quality content by the way i've got to say it's all the highs and lows of childhood packed neatly for a mass consumption the g family which consists of parents garrett and jessica and their three kids has over 5 million followers and subscribers across instagram tiktok youtube and facebook and uploads new content regularly for their expansive cross continental fan base so uh, yeah that's the start of the article and basically it's referring to the bucket list family who are a travel minded family who just basically go on the travels all day every day and vlog it and um, use their kids for that purpose the article goes on to say garrett g 35 the patriarch of the bucket list family sold his app scan to snapchat in 2014 for 54 million dollars in the aftermath of the sale garrett and his family took off for, for what was meant to be a six month journey around the world G sensed an opportunity in documenting their adventures and began creating content around the family's travels. G thinks the thinks of the family's social media presence as a means of recording memories. Our YouTube is our home videos, he tells me on the phone, and our Instagram is a photo journal for us. That's how it started and when something special or exciting is happening dad will whip out his camera because he wants to capture this special memorable moment like any parent would do his family clearly doesn't need the money g insists they do it for themselves well let's take a look at this shall we now i covered this family a couple of years ago okay it did quite well got a lot of backlash from the uh, the bucket fam or whatever they call themselves right? <laughs> because apparently if you have 54 million dollars in the bank it doesn't matter um about exploiting your kids because they don't do it for the money they don't need the money right as you can see by these comments here they clearly um don't need the money so um, they're not doing it for the money so it's not exploitation or something along those lines i think i'm not quite sure the the, <laughs> the exact um thinking behind that one anyway so as i covered them previously they, they do all the things that regular fa family vloggers do including using their children for um, advertising purposes like this one here where she is uh, doing a voiceover for a, a commercial I'm connected with an amazing company called Cellulita at your service they basically take care of everything so your entire trip is awesome and then you've got the um filming there the injuries and illnesses and things like that it's always a popular one, that, in the family vlogging circles, isn't it? Next minute, you're in the emergency room. 
Flashback, we were in Thailand, Dorothy slipped in the shower, cut her chin open, and had to go to the emergency room for stitches. Oh, there it is. Look at it. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, I think it's... Now, there's also the exploitation of your kids' birthdays. That's, that's always a good one, too. Don't forget that one. Hello, you. Happy birthday to you. And then you've got your um, sexual exploitation of uh, minors, you know. Can't forget that one because no matter how much you have in the bank, you know, you can never um, offer your, your kids to the um, the predators enough, can you, right? <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, so there, there's all the positives and the negatives. <laughs> I don't know what the positives are. But anyway, yeah, they film the ki kids and uh, exploit them for money even though they don't need the money because they don't do it for the money because they have the money. <laughs> they do it for themselves, obviously, for themselves. So this journalist, you know, she is very adept and very astute at uh, what she does. She continued, she says, in snarky subreddits dedicated dedicated to critically dissecting the lives of family vloggers not all that dissimilar from the intensity of a reality tv fandom g is judged harshly for his decision to post content in which his children are crying or seem otherwise vulnerable how does he respond to that again he says as i wonder if i i'm starting to annoy him if I'm just creating family videos for our own keepsake and memory. The truth of a family is it's not just all travels. There's also a lot of times when family... There's also a lot of times when someone in the family is getting hurt or sad. And so I try to share the full story, the complete story, the ups and downs, everything in our family's journal. Well, what this moron forgets here is that, um, yeah, he's not just filming it for himself, though, is he? He's filming it for a huge wide audience, as uh, this journalist picked up on, of course. Uh, the truth of family life does sometimes include tears or saying goodbye to a deceased loved one, but um, it's not really a home video, is it? Because home videos aren't usually for an audience of millions. Yeah, for sure, he says. That's where it comes down to my judgment, my call as a parent, because I would never want to put anything out that, ki that the kids are either embarrassed by or ashamed of. Or anything. G notes that he shows his family footage before uploading it. And when, on the rare occasion, his kids ask him not to include something, he honours their requests. No questions asked. Well, that is absolutely lovely and um, perfect, <laughs> you know, as he should do, obviously. But you you got to wonder, obviously, whether or not these kids can consent. And speaking of consenting, because if you're saying that your kids choose whether or not these go up, how did your child, the the birth, <laughs> the one that was born on camera on YouTube, right? How did she uh, consent to it? Did she, did you ask her before it went up? Did you did you say? Excuse me, little one. Uh, we're going to put your birth on on YouTube, and uh, and she said, yeah, yeah. Why not? Go ahead, go ahead. It's fine, it's fine. I don't mind, don't mind. All right. Speaking of that little child that was born on camera, right? Um, here's you, Garrett, admitting on camera that before she was born, that she had would have. A full-time job as a as a YouTuber being exploited. Lovely. The good news is you're going to be born with a job as a travel journalist, traveling all around the world together with your family, documenting and sharing adventures. It's an enjoyable job. It's a well-paying job. That's more than most college grads can say. Lovely. 
So this family are getting a lot of uh, recognition. That's probably why they agreed to do this interview in Cosmopolitan because they are trying to um, justify what they are doing because at the moment they're going on TV and things like that on um, Good Morning America here. It actually came at a time in our lives when we were at a stage where we didn't know what was next. My husband had an app in college, sold it, we came upon some money and it didn't feel right to go buy a house and settle down. So we put the money in savings and set us up, sold our possessions, made about $45,000 and then took off for four months of travel. Four months turned into three years full time and now we're eight years later and almost three 100 kids. <laughs> three kids, almost 100 <laughs> countries under our and they are promoting this uh, book, which they've written in conjunction with um, National Geographic. <laughs> and be sure to pick up the bucket list family travel everywhere books are sold. Which is rather disturbing that these big names are agreeing to to collaborate with with a family that does this. And now I know that these have a lot of support, right? Because apparently they're a lovely family and they don't deserve any hate, as I found out when I did my original video on them. Because uh, the amount of fans that came to me and said, oh, they're so lovely. <laughs> they're nothing like family vloggers. They don't even need the money. <laughs> Sorry, still gets me. Tickles me. Right here, right here. You know? <laughs> Tickles me. Yeah, so um, what do you guys think? Do you think that they are as guilty as um, everybody else? Or, um, or am I barking up the wrong tree, so to speak? Now, this article has a lot more in-depth stuff, and it's brilliantly written. If you haven't read it already, please go and have a look. It tells you all about what's wrong. It goes in-depth and investigates every little step of family vlogging and why it's wrong or questions why it's wrong and um, yeah if you haven't had a look take a look it's brilliant until next time guys please give this video a massive thumbs up comment all of your thoughts about it down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new until next time have a brilliant day a brilliant weekend a brilliant easter until next time bye bye